Hi guys, it's me, Teacher Gon. In our today's video, we will talk about simplifying radicals. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So what we have here is the first example for this topic. And what we have here is x raised to the fifth power. There are multiple ways on how to simplify this. And let me show you the first way on how to simplify x to the fifth power. Remember, if we have square root of x raised to the fifth power, the index here or the number in the radical is 2. So first thing we can do, or the first step, is that we can break down this x to the fifth power as factors like this. We have the square root of x squared times x squared times x. As you can see, I break it down wherein these factors are all perfect squares. Because when we get the square root of x squared, the answer is x. There will be an x outside. And then, when we get the square root of x squared also, there will be an x outside. And here, since this one is not a perfect square, it will remain inside the radical sign. And you can simplify this x times x, that would be x squared times the square root of x. This is the answer for this item. Let, let me show you another way on how to do this because instead of doing it like x squared times x squared times x, we can also simplify this one like the factors of x to the fourth power times x. We're in here, the index is 2. So what is the reason why x to the fourth power is a perfect square? Because we can divide this exponent using the index. And if, you, if you're going to ask me what is the square root of x to the fourth power, the answer is x squared. So how? 4 divided by 2, the answer is 2. And then I will copy the base x. And then since this one is not a perfect square, I will copy the square root of x. And as you can see, the two answers are the same. Now let's move on to another example. Let me give you example number 2. And let's try x or the square root of x raised to the seventh power. So how are we going to simplify this radical? What you can do is to select an exponent that is divisible by this index. So what we have is we can have x to the sixth power times x. Now, to get the square root of x raised to 6, because this one is a perfect square, divide this using the index. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Therefore, the square root of x raised to 6 is x cubed. And this one is not a perfect square. We will copy the square root of x. And this is the answer for item number 2. Let me give you another example for you to master. Number 3. For number 3, let's have this example. I will use two variables x raised to the ninth power and then y raised to the third power. Is it possible to extract the square root? Yes. Now, what do you think are the factors of x raised to the nine that is divisible by 2? Very good. We can break it down as x raised to the eighth power because 8 is divisible by 2 and then the remaining one is x. So what about y raised to the third power? You can break this down as y squared times y. And then let's get the square root. Simply divide this. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Copy the x. You have x raised to the fourth power. And then as for the y variable, we have 2 divided by 2, which is 1. That is simply y. Then copy the remaining or the non-perfect square variable x and y. And this is the answer. So we can read this one as x raised to the fourth power y square root of x y. And this is the answer, guys. Now let's move on with more examples. What we have here are examples with of variables with numbers. Don't worry because this one is not difficult if you are familiar with perfect square numbers. So let's start with example number four. For example number four, we have here 32, or the square root of 32, x raised to the 7th power. First thing we need to do is to figure out 
what are the factors of 32 in which one of the numbers must be perfect square and the other is not because 32 is not a perfect square. So to simplify this, we need to factor it out. So the factors of 32 are 16 times 2. And what about x raised to the 7th power? We will use our knowledge earlier in which this one can we break it down as x raised to 6 times x. So let us extract the square roots. The square root of 16 is equal to 4. So we are done with this. And this one, it will remain inside because this one is not a perfect square. What about this one? 6 divided by 2 is 3. Therefore, this is x cubed. So we are done with this one. And what will remain inside the radical sign are 2 and x. So this is our answer. Our answer is simply 4x cubed times or x square root of 2x. So are you doing good, guys? Now let's move on with item number 5. This is square root of 50, x raised to the 5th power, y cubed, 0 raised to the 4th power. Let me adjust the paper a little. Okay. So here, we can factor it out like this. By the way, I will use this space. We can factor 50 as 25 times 2. This is a perfect square. And here, for the x to the 5th power, we can factor it out as x to the 4th power times x. As for the y variables, we have y squared times y. And as for the c to the 4th power, this is already a perfect square. So we can directly, or we don't need to factor it out. And let's have the answer. As for the answer, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x to the 4th power is x squared. The square root of y square is y. This is a perfect square. The square root of z to the 4th power is z square. We will copy the remaining 2x and y. We have 2x and y. This is the answer for item number 5. Now let's move on with the 6th example. This is a cube root. But we'll still use our knowledge earlier. Since this one is a cube root, what we need to think are factors that are perfect cube. 16 is a perfect square, but it will not work because what we have right now is a cube root. So to simplify this, we can factor out 16 where in the factors, or one of the factors must be perfect cube and a non-perfect cube. And the factors are this, 8 times 2. 8 times 2 is still 16, and here 8 is the perfect cube. Now, for the x to the 4th power, we can factor it out as x cubed times x. So why x cubed? Remember that the index here is 3, and this exponent is divisible by 3. Let's, figure, let's simplify this. The cube root of 8 is 2. Let's put it outside. The cube root of x cubed, simply divide 3, divided by 3. That is 1, so that will be x na lang. And what remains inside is 2 and x. And let me put a cube root here. So the answer is 2x, cube root of 2x. Now let's move on here. Let's adjust first the paper. So what we have now is this. The cube root of 54, x to the 5th power, y raised to the 7th power. Simplify or factor the radicands. 54 is not a perfect cube, but we can factor it out as 27 times 2 because this one is a perfect cube. And as for the x to the 5th power, what you need to do is to find an exponent of x that is divisible by 3. And definitely, that is x raised to the 3 or 3rd power times x squared because 2 plus 3 plus 2 is 5. And as for the y variable, we have y raised to 6 times y. And now, we are ready to simplify this. The cube root of 27 is definitely 3. 
this one, the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of y squared, y raised to 6 is y squared. So how? 6 divided by 3, that is 2. And then we will copy the remaining bases inside. We have 2, x squared, and y. And this is the answer, guys. Now, guys, I hope you learned something from this video. And let me give you... Let me give you an assignment wherein this is part of our routine. Every time na mag-end tayo ng ating session, your assignment will be this. The square root of square root of 18x to the fifth power. What do you think is the answer, guys? So, guys, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe, but hit mo na rin bell button for you to be updated sa ating latest uploads. Again, it's me, Teacher Gon. Maraming maraming salamat. Bye-bye!